Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about formaldehyde resins. So first of all, what are resins? Resins are the non-volatile solids, maybe semi-solid, which are obtained from certain plants. Now in this category, we are going to discuss phenol formaldehyde resin and melamine formaldehyde resin. Let's start with the phenol formaldehyde resin. Phenol formaldehyde resins or polymers, they are the oldest polymer. And these polymers, they are condensation polymers. Means they condense in the presence of either acid or base. So what are the monomers of phenol formaldehyde resin? Now the very first monomer here is phenol. And the second monomer here is formaldehyde molecule formaldehyde molecule COCH2 molecule. Now they will condense either in the presence of H ions or in the presence of H negative. OH negative means acid or in the presence of some base. And they condense to form two products. One is called orthohydroxymethyl phenol and another is called parahydroxymethyl phenol. Why orthohydroxymethylphenol? Reason being this molecule, this much molecule is the phenol molecule. And this part is hydroxymethyl. So it is at ortho position, orthohydroxymethylphenol and parahydroxymethylphenol. Now these ortho molecules will combine or better to say they will condense under similar conditions to form a linear product called Novolac. Novolac is nowadays we are using it in the paints. So how Novolac is prepared? Very simply you have to write the ortho molecules OH, CH2, OH. These are ortho molecules. Now these ortho molecules will condense with each other. So they will condense with each other by the loss of water molecule. Now see OH from this side, H from this side will be removed to form again either in the presence of H positive or in the presence of OH negative to form a linear product called Novolac, Novolac molecule CH2 again and it can elongate since it's a polymer so this chain can elongate. So Novolac is a linear polymer of orthohydroxymethylphenol. This is a linear polymer. Now if there is a condensation between orthohydroxy and parahydroxymethylphenol then we will get a cross-linked polymer called bakelite. That means now we have to take orthohydroxymethylphenol as well as parahydroxymethylphenol. So this is parahydroxymethylphenol and now this one is orthohydroxymethylphenol. They will condense with each other since it's a polymerization. So N such monomers and N such monomers will unite. They will undergo condensation and during that condensation loss of N molecules of water will take place to form a cross highly cross linked polymer called Bakelite. So highly cross-linked polymer we are going to have and that polymer is called Bakelite. So this is a structure of Bakelite molecule. Bakelite molecule. Bakelite. OH, CH2, CH2. These are cross linkages. So, these are cross linkages. Here we have phenol, here we have phenolic group, and so on. So, this will extend. This will extend. So, this molecule can extend both the sides. So, that's why it is a polymer called bakelite. So, what are the properties and uses of bakelite? properties and uses of bakelite. The very first property of this is it's a cross-linked thermosetting polymer. 
Thermosetting means once it will be molded in a particular shape, it cannot be changed. It's set into that shape. Now, this thermosetting cross-linked polymer is again of two types. One is soft bakelite and another one is hard bakelite. Soft bakelite and hard bakelite. Soft and hard bakelite. Soft bakelite and hard bakelite. So, what are soft bakelites? Simply, soft bakelites means they will not have very uh, concrete structure. These bakelites, they are used for making glues, which bind laminated wooden planks. In varnishes also we are using and in liquors also we are using. Whereas, hard bakelites, they are used in the manufacturing of pens, combs, tabletops, electrical goods, etc. Let us now talk about melamine for maldehyde. Melamine for maldehyde resin. As the name suggests, it has got two monomers. First is called melamine. So this is melamine unit. And the second monomer here is definitely for maldehyde unit. For maldehyde. I can write COH2 or I can simply write in this form HCOH for maldehyde. Now they will combine, they will condense to form first of all an intermediate. So this one is intermediate. Intermediate first of all, which will be converted into the polymer. NHCH2OH, NH2, NH2. Now this intermediate gets converted into product. So product after polymerization. So, after polymerization, it will be forming the product. So, this is the product of melamine formaldehyde resin. So, in this case, you will get NHCH2 linkage this side, this side as well as on the third side. Means, on all the sides, it can be extended. So, this molecule is called melamine polymer. Melamine polymer. Now, what are the properties and uses of this melamine polymer? Uses. First of all, poly, uh, properties. It's a very hard and tough. So, that's why it is mainly used in the formation of crockery. Crockery nowadays, it is in trend because cups and plates made from these polymers, they are unbreakable. And of course, they can be converted into beautiful patterns or beautiful designs quite durable and unbreakable. You can polish them also and their polish will remain as such for a longer period. Uses, of course, it is used in the formation of the crockery. Thank you.